You are listening to G-Pods by Gaurav Aswani. And your video starts in 3, 2, 1. Hi friends, a warm good evening. And this is Dr. Radha Krishnan Pillai here. And as all of you know, we are actually doing this particular sessions during the lockout time. We are having a 14 day series and we are calling it 14 days, 14 books of Chanakya. I'll repeat it, we are doing 14 days, 14 books of Chanakya. Till now, we have already done eight books and today we are actually going for our ninth book. The best way to remember how many books we have covered is to remember the dates. So it is from 1st April to the 14th of April. So remember, we are actually looking at 14 books and today's date is 9th. So today we are going to be doing the ninth book. Before we do that, uh, let us have a quick prayer. And this prayer is that something that we do every particular day. A different prayer, a prayer that Chanakya starts with in his particular Kautilya's Arthashastra. And the prayer is Om Namaha Shukra Brahaspati Dhyam. Om Namaha Shukra Brahaspati Dhyam. We are inv invoking the two great teachers of strategy, they also wrote the Arthashastra themselves, Shukracharya and Brahaspati. Yes, we invoke the teachers of Chanakya and of course we invoke Chanakya himself and all our teachers, elders and everybody whom we respect to gather knowledge in today's world. So with that friends, with the prayers, we will start today's session. Today's session is going to be on a very different and interesting book. Chanakya and the Art of Getting Rich. Chanakya and the Art of Getting Rich. And I know the cover page is very, very impressive. All of you can see it, it has got a symbol of the Indian rupee. Right? Usually Chanakya is known for his shikha or the choti that we call it. But here the cover designers have done a fantastic cover design. It stands out. It's got a rupee in it. Of course, it's got a Chanakya face in it without actually showing the face. The face is a little bit hidden, but the rupee is always shown. So Chanakya's curiosity and the art of getting rich will be explained today through this particular book. So friends, before I start also, let me announce to you what is the book for tomorrow. Okay, so I'm going to actually share with you something about tomorrow before we start today. Tomorrow's book, yeah, the 10th day, the book is going to be something that is very unique and something that is very different. A book that I've written for children. Yes, a book that I've written for children. And the book is Chatur Chanakya and the Himalayan Problem. Yes, Chatur Chanakya and the Himalayan Problem. So you would be happy to know that we also have a children's book. This book is a series. We have created a character called Chatur Chanakya. And Chatur Chanakya is guiding the children in schools. I'm going to talk about it tomorrow. But remember, this is very different. We'll come back about that later on. But today we start with our book. And that is Chanakya and the Art of Getting Rich. For all those people who want to get rich, the Chanakya way, this is your catch. So with that, friends, uh, we are going to start about today's book. So let me give you a background of today's book. Chanakya and the Art of Getting Rich. The publishers of my book is Penguin Random Book House. Yesterday also the book that we saw, Anvik Shiki and the Art of and Art of Thinking. This is a part of that series. Okay, so Art of Thinking and this is Art of Getting Rich. Interestingly, there is a third book also in the series and that is called Art of War. We will see that later. So there are three arts. The art of thinking, the art of getting rich, and Chanakya and the art of war. We will see that a little bit later during this particular 14 days. But today it's about being money. We will talk about money, my dear honey. So that, as we do, also look at the back side or the back side of the book. And I'll just read it out for you. Uh, the Maida's touch. The Maida's touch for all your wealth creation needs the maida's touch for all your wealth creation needs chanakya's arthashastra 
Chanakya's Arthashastra is an unrevealed political thesis that has been used by scholars. That has been used by scholars, academicians, and teachers across the world. So don't think that only in India we have we know about Arthashastra. I've been to many countries, and even in Germany, I've been to one of the universities called the Heidelberg University. There, I found a translation of Kautilya's Arthashastra. In German language, which was translated in 1924. So think how famous Arthashastra was, not only in our country but in many countries for many generations. So it's a very world famous treatise. And in this book, there's a Chanakya and the Art of Getting Rich. Okay, uh, Radha Krishna Pele brings out inherent lessons from the Arthashastra to present a strategy. To present. A strategic and practical way of wealth creation. Yes, practical way and strategic way of wealth creation. This holistic study, this holistic study highlights like importance of a guide for thoughts and processes on the path to wealth creation. It's like a guide. It is also tell you the process about wealth creation, and it also talks about. uh many ideas like wealth recognition it talks about management wealth distribution and so many things okay so this is about everything that we connected with wealth so i'm going to start the book reading now where i'm going to talk to you about some of these chapters so when you open this particular book the first page that you see chanakya and the art of getting rich by radha krishnan pille of course this is the main cover page as all of you must have seen Okay, and this is dedicated. It's a very unique dedication that is already there, and it says the book is dedicated to all the rich people whom I have met in my life. It is dedicated to all the rich people whom I have met in my life. They were both rich. They were rich both from outside and inside. Yes. Richness is about being rich outside and also more important inside. Yes, I've been very fortunate. I met so many richy rich people. I have a big advantage that I live in the financial capital of Mumbai, of India, which is Mumbai. And in Mumbai, we have some of the richest men. But you know what? They are very nice people. We have this concept uh, concept about rich people that they are bad. They are very selfish. They are very money minded. Uh, Ah, uh, you know. But after I met all these guys, I realized how genuine they are. So there are people who have made money the wrong way, but we are not talking about them. Our role models have got to be those genuine people who are rich from inside and outside. You know, friends, there is a corona problem going around, and a lot of financial problems have come to most of the people. The economic uh, problems that have started because of the coronavirus is impacting everybody. But I have also seen. that as the poor are getting affected the rich are also coming out and donating you know it's very important to understand they are the wealth creators they are the people who actually are part of our society and we should respect them give them the kind of uh, appreciation that we deserve they are the job creators they produce create wealth for others they pay taxes because of which the government runs one important point which i want to make about rich people is that rich people according to chanakya and also the mahabharata have to be advisors to the king okay let me repeat that the rich people have to be advisors to the king it is said in mahabharata that there should be at least 14 people it is a maximum okay there will be one rajaguru but 14 people from the business community who will advise the king how to create wealth for the kingdom so if you met a rich guy don't only look at his money don't only look at what he can give you but you know the rich people also have lot of experience so if you ask them very frankly with a with a very nice humble attitude about creating wealth they actually are ready to teach you and i have met so many of them some of the greatest people who have created wealth are actually great from inside okay so friends if you want to understand this particular book and if you want to understand indian culture we should respect money This is the only country in the world which has actually divinized wealth. I'll repeat this word: it is the only country in the world which has divinized wealth. It has given wealth a spiritual dimension. We call it 
Lakshmi. And we have also given a feminine form. We say Mata Lakshmi. You know, even in Bombay Stock Exchange. So I keep going there. You know, a lot of my friends, the BSC or the NSC, National Stock Exchange. In Bombay Stock Exchange, on the Diwali day, also we do a Mohurat uh, trading. A puja is done of Lakshmi, that is the goddess of wealth. No other country in the world will talk about divinized wealth. Being rich, being wealthy is good. Being rich, being wealthy in the right manner is spiritual. So being rich is actually a spiritual success also. So never ever ever blame the rich people. At the same time, when you will become rich, understand you have to give back to the society and only with a spiritual attitude will you will understand what true richness means. So let me also tell you, if you look at great Indian characters, okay, we talk about Krishna in Mahabharata, we talk about Ram, we talk about Gautam, Buddha, Mahavir, all these great people were actually kings. Remember this, they were not ordinary citizens like you and me. They were kings. At the same time, they were also very rich and also spiritual. So this is very important that in our country, being rich doesn't mean they're wrong. In fact, they can be some of the greatest leaders of our government. Buddha was a king. It was spiritual. Rama, Krishna, everybody spoke about uh, wealth creation as well as they also spoke about spirituality. So if you want to be truly spiritual, understand wealth. And spiritual organizations also have wealth created through the society. So there are so many dimensions. We can go on and on and on and on. But the first thing is respect wealth, respect wealthy people internally and externally. That's the dedication of the book. So if you have the right frame of mind, then we will respect wealth. So this is the next page. So this is the content page. Okay. So friends, in the content page, you can see the number of chapters that we have the flow of the book and as you know i have always kept it simple and very readable so let me read it out to you what these contents of the book are the first of course starts with introduction yeah what is the book all about introduction about the book then next chapter or i would say after the introduction the first chapter is understanding anvik shiki remember what we covered in detail the whole book was on anvik shiki but here we are looking at anvik shiki from the standpoint of wealth and richness a very different dimension of which we start with that then second chapter is thinking your way to prosperity thinking your way to prosperity it always starts from the right thinking from the right attitude it's always about beginning with the end in the mind you don't start just walking and then ask you know Kaha jana hai? where should i go it is actually about deciding Okay, where I want to be. So we should think about prosperity. Uh, you know, Pranav, one of his students always tells this, and I, I really like his idea. He said, Bahar se raja banne se pehle, andar se raja bana. You know, it is very important to know that before you become rich from outside, you should be rich from inside. So what is a way of thinking about being rich, about prosperity? So this is creating a mindset of rich people. Then the third chapter is called, Stages of wealth. There are four stages of wealth. We'll be covering that chapter in detail today. There are four stages of wealth. Everybody doesn't become wealthy. That's okay. But everybody can become wealthy. And what are the stages? Like in school, colleges, and education system, you have to go through pre primary, primary, secondary, and higher education. So there are stages of wealth. You always have to get the basics right. We'll talk about the stages of wealth. Fourth is accounting systems. Many people can create money, but if the accounting process is not right, the money that they have created will also be lost. Yeah. One of my Sanskrit teachers used to tell that it is okay to be born a poor man and then become rich. It is very, very bad to actually start as a rich man and end as a poor man. Garibi say Ameri bahut acha lagta hai. When you are poor and you become rich, it is okay. But Ameri say Garibi Bahad Bura Lakta hai. From rich, when you become poor, it's very, very bad feeling. And one of the very important things with Chanakya says is that even rich people need to have good accounting systems. What is accounting system? It keeps you track of your income and expenses. A lot of people 
have the fortune of being in rich families but if they don't know how to manage their wealth how to keep the accounts finances in check the existing wealth will also go away there is a joke about a person uh, uh, who was wealthy and he said you know what i am a millionaire you know i am a millionaire mil lakhpati hu those kind of a people but when i was born i was a billionaire lekin jab main paida hua tha tabhi main karodpati tha so what happened is that from a karodpati he became a lakhpati from a billionaire he became a millionaire i don't want that to happen but if you want to know the secret of maintaining wealth that is accounting systems keep a check on your accounts and chanakya had created a robust accounting systems we will also see that in this particular book in detail for anybody who has got the interest in studying the detailed accounting systems just to give you a point indians have their own unique accounting systems also for example the marwadi community it's a very rich community a business community has got a traditional system called as the parata system of accounting it's a very simple what we call as a daily dashboard how to manage your finance how much came how much went out so it's very important to understand our accounting system so chanakya's accounting systems of course with a modern application has been dealt in this particular chapter then comes chapter number 5 chapter number 5 is your richness guru okay for everything in life you'll require a guru for everything if you are a sports person a business person a politician also a, a guru also requires a guru right and there is a saying that a consultant also requires a consultant in the same way if you want to become rich you have to choose your richness guru you can't do it alone and he definitely should be he or she should be rich himself or herself so there is a chapter on your richness guru how to find one and how to actually take the guidance from them then comes teaching by example so here comes another chapter about you have to be rich and you have to teach others how to be rich you have to be rich and teach others also to be rich in india uh, we actually you know believe in giving the joy of giving giving is first and taking comes later so for all those people who are already rich understand you have to teach also so teaching by example the eighth chapter is the importance of kosha the importance of kosha remember the saptanga model swami amartya janapada durga kosha danda mitra iti prakritiya swami amartya janapada durga kosha danda mitra iti prakritiya the seven pillars of a kingdom or the seven secrets of leadership in that one of the important pillars of treasury or finance is called kosha so that whole thing has been explained here in detail in the chapter number 8 called the importance of kosha how chanakya made india the richest country in the world or bharat varsh of that time the magal all that thing about the treasury and there's a saying your treasury should never be full it should be overflowing because the treasury should never be full it should be overflowing so if you require 100 rupees you should have 200 rupees and that's where you can invest from 100 to 100 is hand to mouth existence you know but we are not talking about that and then chapter number 9 talks about questions to contemplate yeah very important so we are also having a complete workbook yeah that is what we will see so if you look at it this particular thing we also have question and answers in this particular book so please wait back till the end we'll be telling you what are the kind of a, so you can actually make a financial plan using chanakya's techniques yes you can use a financial plan so there are questions to complete you can actually draw an exercise and you can start on a journey to become rich the chanakya way and of course there are chapters on acknowledgement notes bibliography all the references where did i read where did i come about this book etc so friends let me start by doing a little bit of a reading from this particular book and uh, in the introduction chapter okay in the introduction chapter there's a big introduction but i will directly skip and come to a section where we are talking about artha shastra and the financial and the uh, models that has been introduced in this particular book oh okay there are quite there are quite a few modern concepts of money management discussed all of you know there are 
the world of chanakya and today has been very different but there are many 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 new concepts that has come in also like investments in mutual fund then capital market share market some of you have been asking me questions about share market also so all these modern concepts are there which never existed during chanakya's times yes let us accept it chanakya's era and our era the whole economic models have changed so we accept that you know one of the things i want everybody to be clear is that we are should be proud of our past our heritage our traditions our forefathers our great knowledge systems we should be proud of that but we should never never and never get stuck in the past just because you are proud of your past doesn't mean you get stuck in the past because a past is great the future is different okay the past is great but the future is different so we always accept in this particular book chanakya's models of the past have changed but there are principles which are constant that is what we talk about in this particular book bahut sare badlav hote hain lekin bahut sare niyam ke badlav nahi hote so you know the principles that are there is what we say so here we see today we we talk about wealth we talk about mutual funds we talk about capital markets etc which never existed during chanakya's time i have done my best to bring in a modern dimension i have done my best to bring down a modern dimension to the understanding of wealth and not just get stuck with the theories of the past make sure you keep a notebook during uh, along with you to jot down the ideas you want to act on this is one tip that i would like to give all of you even when you are uh, doing this facebook live or instagram live please keep a notebook and a pen You never know some idea will strike you you can refer to it make some notes about it always so when you reading my books keep a pen and a paper and just keep writing ideas and that can be useful that way you will be able to test yourself along the way that way you will be able to test the your own success along the way there is a possibility okay there is a possibility that you are already rich okay so the art of getting rich is not only for the newcomers it is also for People are already rich, probably because of your past efforts. You put a lot of efforts, then you became rich. And the past effort doesn't mean only this birth. No? Probably you are born in a rich family. You must have definitely done some merits, or as they say, punya karma, because of which you are born in such very well-to-do families. So because of your past, you may be already rich. If so, this book will act as a guide for you to nurture the garden so that it keeps bearing fruits. For you and the generations to come, if you are born rich, it is your responsibility to grow it more. So don't think that I am born rich, so now I am not going to work. So this will guide you to create more wealth than what you found. Your past is never your future. Your past is never your future. You must not become complacent with your wealth, but need to keep developing new strategies to maintain and grow your wealth. To maintain and grow your wealth. Now we'll start with an idea of Chanakya. The Kautilya Artha Shastra is full of ideas that is given about you know uh, the, about the wealth creation, wealth maintenance, etc. So the sutra goes like this: If the king is energetic, if the king is energetic, his subjects will be equally energetic. If he is slack and lazy to performing his duties. the subjects will also become lazy thereby thereby eat into his wealth besides besides a lazy king will easily fall into the hands of the enemies hence the king should himself always be energetic hence the king should be himself and always energetic remember if you want to be wealthy you have to be active lazy people will never never become wealthy and if there is efforts it is called purushartha agar mehnat karoge shayad aap 100 bar fail ho jaoge you may fail 100 times but surely you will become rich and you will become successful same thing goes with money you know if you look at lot of business when they also fail 100 times it is not that they became overnight success in fact there is a saying That there is a joke that I had once read. A rich man was asked by a journalist, "You know, sir, you became successful overnight. Sir, you became successful overnight. 
he said yeah i became successful overnight but the night was too long but the night was too long I don't think that you become rich overnight but even if you are rich you cannot afford to be lazy one has to fulfill one's duty of keeping an eye on the one wealth one already has if we are not alert and vigilant about the wealth we already own it will uh, it will eventually go away the subjects that is the people around us will eat away our wealth so suppose you are working in a company and you have your own company if you are not alert others will take away your money that's where the frauds you are seeing in many companies so be absolutely alert to protect the wealth that you have created there may be situations where wealth may be snatched away from you this also happens there may be situations where wealth is snatched away from you as you say zabardasti taken away from you forcefully taken away from you you will be helpless when that happens you will be totally helpless when somebody snatches away the money from you therefore it is better to be proactive about wealth rather than cut a sorry figure when the wealth you have is gone it's also about financial planning it's about investments about safety it is about savings and so many things that we miss out gone are the days when if you were both rich and you will die rich also you were born in rich family you die rich brother. no 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 gone are the days our era is where rags to riches stories are as common as a riches to rags stories to become rich there are a lot of people also who have become rich to poor in an age where time is money yeah yeah today everything is about time everything is fast abhi 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 i want it now and the time is money you need to amass wealth as much as possible in minimum time it's a fantastic generation where the richest man can be actually a first generation businessman look at all these it companies all the online platforms which have become very rich right from bill gates to warren buffett right from here in india also you can see so many companies first generation you don't have to need a legacy and you don't even have to wait for a long time you can become rich very young age also so it's a very different era you can become rich in a very short period of time also you need to amass wealth in the minimum time your biggest competition will not be the one who is bigger than you okay, your biggest competition is not the one who is bigger than you but the one who is smarter than you okay your biggest competition is the one who is smarter than you he or she will understand speed and strategy matters I repeat it speed and strategy matters remember the two s speed and strategy here is a talk of mine which i gave in tedx okay tedx crc i would like all of you to actually watch that youtube video just go on youtube and type this whole video of mine is called how to get richy rich quickly okay that that something which is the catch line go to youtube and watch it how to get richy rich quickly i'll also try and put a video of that on facebook as well as uh, uh, instagram so you can view about this particular thing the whole video on how to get richy rich quickly you can watch it here so i will send you the link then you will understand this book better make sure you watch the video before you start reading this book yeah because in that 17 18 minutes i have given all the crux of it there is a lot of happiness in becoming rich yeah don't think it is something very boring uh, it's a very happy feeling to be rich right having a lot of money and more in making others rich along with you yeah there's a lot of happiness in making others also rich along with you it's a happy feeling to have money it's also a happy feeling to have rich friends around you here is to the start of your journey this is the start of your journey to the world of richness okay so welcome to the world of rich rich welcome to the world of chanakya and arthashastra so friends uh, these are all just the introductory ideas but what i thought is that i will share one very important principle of this particular book which has been there for a long time and probably you can understand it it's called the stages of wealth as i told you these are called the stages of wealth so there are four stages of wealth 
and let me tell you quickly this comes from uh, page number 49 onwards okay so this book has got many chapters we read that so this is chapter number 3 which is called the stages of the okay i want to read that it's a big chapter but i'll just tell you what the stages of wealth are the four stages of wealth are wealth identification wealth creation wealth management and wealth distribution i repeated the four stages of wealth are wealth identification wealth creation wealth management and wealth distribution just remember these four and we will go step by step to understand this as far as it is given uh, in this book wealth identification the first one the first stage wealth does not just start flowing in one day it just doesn't happen that you know you open a tap and the water comes in somebody has built the whole tap and the whole water flow from the dam to your house so it just doesn't happen overnight it requires an idea it requires an idea and the person who works with that idea okay many people tell that you know wealth is about my idea today we have something called as intellectual property yes wealth is an idea but you also require a person who works on that particular idea the ideas are floating everywhere they say you know paisa sab jagah hai main paisa sab jagah mein hai but wo jama karne ke liye to collect that money and make that money you require a person so person behind that idea is the one who becomes rich okay in reality there is money to be made from every idea only right application is required only right application is required few people few people can convert ideas into wealth yeah, that's the rare that's why are the some people rich and others are not because they don't know the process not everyone can make money in sports not everyone can make money in business not everyone can make money in writing books not everyone can make money in uh, another fields okay this is because everyone is not meant for everything very important though just because sachin tendulkar made lots of money in cricket doesn't mean you have to go there because your natural talent could be something very different but everyone is meant for something everybody is not meant for everything but everybody is meant for something what is that one thing what is that one thing which can make you become rich or which makes money for you so this is the trade secret everybody has got something unique something talented which is god given gift that will not exist in somebody else suppose you understand that uniqueness in you believe me you will become rich very easily figuring this out is the first step in becoming rich wealth identification figuring out that one thing that will make you rich this is called wealth identification and arthashastra says that you will always make money through the process of following your swadharma through the process of following your swadharma what does swadharma mean you know it is actually the natural talent a god given gift to you a problem is that everybody wants to be like the other person find out yourself what do you are good at for example i have been very fortunate to be successful in the field of writing books but if i were to look at some other field necessarily i may not become rich and somebody who is rich in another field they cannot write books and become successful somebody can make film somebody can be in other fields whatever so friends what is that one thing and the question is that how do you identify it? that's the secret the secret is follow your passion or discover your passion follow your purpose all those methods are there in india traditionally we also have the method of you know knowing your swadharma through your horoscope yeah that's also important now when a child is born if you are a good uh, uh, astrologer the traditional method is that he will tell you what are the unique talents in you what are the journey that you are born for your purpose in life so follow any mechanism maybe ask yourself you know last time we saw that if you sit down and write how you will be able to discover your own uh, swadharma it is finding your purpose your natural talent and stan said it very nicely that everybody cannot uh, you know climb a tree if you make a fish climb a tree then you know the fish will die 
leave it to the monkeys they are good at that particular job so you better be in the ocean and swim in this vast ocean but why are you going to climb a tree and pick yours and kill yourself so find what you're good at what is a natural talent the fish is naturally good in water the monkey is naturally good in climbing trees what are you good at follow that journey that's called wealth identification now we come to the second aspect wealth creation a lot of people know what they are good at but they never take that journey because of some fears because of some psychological barriers mujhe pata hai ki isme main acha hu aur the dar aisa hai ki shayad isme paisa milega kya i know one of my friends you know in school he actually was an excellent painter and he wanted to actually join a painting course and you know study it. but somewhere uh, he somewhere had to self doubt and his parents also never believed it and saying that you know painters never make money not every painter makes money but if you are that god gifted painter why not and we have got rich painters also don't think that you know just because somebody has not done it it's not meant for me so if you identify what you are good at the first thing is take your step forward like i never thought you know art shastra is my field because when i started there's hardly anybody whom i knew who was in this particular field i found out it is god's grace of course you know without the grace of god you will never know what you are good at so somewhere i realized things so if you realize what you are good at and anything and everything can make you money as long as you are committed so those who identify their talent and their potential do not necessarily become successful some people have identified it but that doesn't guarantee you will become successful identification is one thing and becoming successful is another thing there are many people who are not child prodigies the child prodigies they naturally good at it they are talented enough. not everybody is a child prodigy yet they become successful because of their hard work and commitment to their work so if you identify you need to create wealth there are people who are born talented and they shine in front of everyone as a potential of for excellence yet at time progresses they do not put in the right efforts and all their talent is wasted those with hard work and effort surprise those with just natural talent so if you identify your natural talent put a lot of efforts and you become successful at the same time hard work is very 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 essential okay hard work is very very essential so that's wealth creation you cannot take it for granted that i'll be rich forever or i can just remember uh, that you know i'll just become rich overnight no 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 there is hard work and even if it is destined that you have to become rich still you will require hard work there are two sanskrit words they are called prarabdha and purushartha remember these two sanskrit words prarabdha is a destiny purushartha is a self effort even if you are destined you still have to put efforts there is a joke uh, uh, which goes that there was a person an astrologer told him that you will definitely become rich it is destined and he says your part to richness is that you will hit a jackpot a lottery this person waited 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 and all those things and no nothing no jackpot no lottery getting successful so he was not winning so he went back and uh, to the astrologer and said you know i don't think i am winning any lottery so he said you know do one thing do this puja then probably but you are 100% going to become rich so somewhere he started doing ganesha puja and uh, he started doing this again but again nothing was happening so one day he got very angry on ganesha and said ganesha i'm going to stop you know uh, uh, praying to you because you know it is destined to me but you know i'm never hitting a lot and you know what ganesha he believed in ganesha so much that ganesha actually came out from that idol and he said my dear friend i've been waiting for you to win the lottery it's already there in your destiny and right that's what was correct the thing that please go and at least buy a lottery ticket please go and at least buy a lottery ticket so even if you are destined you have to put your hard effort okay so don't just become lazy do your bit of contributing to that particular journey of becoming rich so with that let's say the first part of your journey is identifying and becoming rich and i'll tell you chanakya says this after 100 trials you definitely become rich now the journey changes first of all it was going behind the money now it is maintaining the money and taking it forward so the third step is called wealth management yeah the third step is called wealth management we are all aware of the 
the richest to rag stories. Yeah? Richest to rags and uh, rags to richest stories. Apart from misfortune hitting a person, another reason for such tragedy is the person inability to manage wealth. There are people who are rich and they become rags, poor. How? Because they could not manage the wealth. So therefore, the third step is wealth management. There are many instances when people become suddenly rich by the stroke of a fortune, maybe a lottery or something else, you know. Somebody just gives you some wealth. Maybe a rich uncle says, you know, my uh, you know, my nephew or my niece will get this. There are people who are like that and very lucky. So suddenly by fortune, you become rich. The stroke of fortune. They win a lottery or they get a job which pays them a huge salary. Unexpected salary, 10 times than what you expected. Imagine you suddenly get a job in Google or Facebook. Then your salaries cannot be compared to any Indian standards. You know? So that's also fortune. Suddenly money starts coming to you. Many such people who have never seen such a high amount of money lose their mental balance and do not know what to do. This is also a true story. People who suddenly get well, they don't know how to balance it. We've never seen it. So if you know there are some people who can manage 100, 500 rupees, and suddenly you give them 10,000 rupees, they'll go bonkers. It's suddenly becoming rich is because of fortune. But if you don't know how to manage this, it's dangerous. They receive advice from all kinds of sources. So if you're rich, suddenly money comes, everybody comes and tells, do this, invest there, do this, do that. You never know. They're selfish people or really genuine advisors. But all these advisors may not necessarily be concerned about the benefit of the person. They might be looking at short term selfish own goals. They may be only looking at things, got money? Come on, come on, I'll ask him some part of it in a nice way. What is important is that when fortune hits you, don't spend. I repeated, when fortune hits you, don't spend. There's so many stories that we know of people who won lottery or maybe got a fortune and suddenly after two, three years, they're back to square one because they spend the money. They don't know how to plan for the bad days. They only know bad days. So suddenly good days have come, but if you don't know how to maintain it, you'll go away. So that's why you have to plan out, you have to save, you have to invest. All these tips you have to get from experts. Okay, so those people who are rich, who themselves have rich, ask them, sir, as a rich person, I become rich for the first time. Please help me, guide me, and tell me how to manage this particular wealth. So all these things will happen. But wealth management is also equally important. And now we come to the last stage of wealth, which is wealth distribution. Yes, friends, that's a very important thing is that don't ever, ever, ever keep the wealth only with you. It has to be distributed. So if you want to be a very rich person, understand wealth comes from society and has to go back to the society. It's interestingly uh, known to us that the richy people also have a very interesting, uh, you know, a uh, very interesting uh, budget for charity. Okay? Yeah, it's true. The real rich people all know, also know that you have to give back. And now look at the corona problem around how many rich people are coming down and distributing the wealth that they have in some form or the other. They have their own foundation, sometimes their own trust. Today, the government in India also has got policies for CSR, corporate social responsibility. And one of my management gurus, uh, Dr. Mrityunjay Atreya, he is a PhD from Harvard on Indian management. Yeah, Harvard event. He's a very uh, senior person. He is a Padma Shri, Padma, uh, Padma Bhushan, yeah, not in Padma Shri, by the government of India. He revived Indian management. And uh, Dr. Mrityunji Apreya used to tell something very nice. You can Google about him also. And I mentioned about him in my book, Corporate Chanakya. He used to tell that, you know, forget corporate social responsibility. First start with individual social responsibility. CSR to ISR, individual social responsibility or personal social responsibility. Don't wait for the company. Because everybody may not be a business owner. But whatever you have, you can give wealth to others. Okay, so friends, it's important that you distribute the wealth. Now, I will put this model into three perspectives for all of you. What are the three, uh, uh, the two perspectives? You know, you can look at it as your life. So let's look at your life uh, uh, in uh, 100 years. The first 24 years, you're a student. You're studying very hard. So you're trying to identify your natural talent. Next 24 years, you're married, settled. You have to wealth create, wealth identification, wealth creation. Then, you know, 
you are going to get older so you have to manage your wealth for the post retirement days so wealth management comes in and the fourth step is that when your children are settled everything you are done you will distribute back to the society so very rich people also have trust to give back to the society but that doesn't mean that only you have to do it at every stage the second aspect is that you don't have to go stage by stage you can start anywhere and all the four can be followed for example let's say you are at the starting stage and you got only 100 rupees now you don't have to wait for giving back well when you become rich that is the fourth stage so even in the first stage you can actually start distributing like for example if you have a policy everybody has got their own policies in that i will give 10% or 5% of my wealth for charity for basic calculation or for other society needs or whatever so out of 100 rupees start giving 10 rupees now or 5 rupees whatever you decide you know why because if you don't create the habit now when you become rich you will not give that so when you got 1000 crores that time you will saying 1000 crores 10% is almost like oh okay now you 100 crores you have to develop the habit of thinking like a rich man from day one a rich person never becomes rich and then starts giving he already has got an attitude of giving and when he becomes rich he gives more okay so if you have 100 rupees you should start saving also now the wealth management starts now and also wealth creation so it is not 1 2 3 4 it all happens simultaneously and parallelly so friends i just want to tell you that it's never about later on it all starts now that's about the book chanakya and the art of getting rich lots of questions coming in so let me address a few of them today okay we got a question coming from padmini prasad so what is padmini's question how to study arthashastra in uh, the gurukul system how did you study arthashastra in the gurukul system yeah and there was a question similar to that does gurukula system actually exist Many people say that Gurukul system is something of the past data. No, no, no. Even today, I know of so many. At least hundred Gurukuls I know. In the modern day era, I'm talking about 2020, yeah, where the Gurukul system still exists. It's a very, very traditional model where the Guru Shishya, you know, experience the bhav or the emotion is very rich. It's never selfish. And I have seen that in Chinmay Mission. I have studied the Gurukul system. If you want to know how to study Artha Shastra, how I studied, I went to Chinmay International Foundation in Kerala. Please remember this. You can go and Google and type it, and it's called Chinmaya International Foundation. It is in Kerala, a place uh, near Ernakulam. And if you want to know about it, you can go and type Chinmaya International Foundation. The website is called Chinfo, C H I N F O dot O R G. I went over there. There's one teacher, one student, Dr. Gangalaran Nair, Swami Advanandji of Chinmaya Mission. They all guided me. If you want to find out the subject and study in a Gurukul model, it is possible. But before that, pray to God. Because the God has to send you the best teacher. You may be a good student, but a teacher is also equally important. So, does Gurukul system exist? Of course, it does. Padmin. Then we have a question from Abhishek Chandan. Uh, sorry, Ashok Chandan. Ashok says, "What uh, would Chanakya do in this particular situation?" So, we are talking about the coronavirus situation, and I got uh, one more person. I think it's Shiji Mom. Was asking a similar question. What would Chanakya do in this situation of coronavirus? The Chanakya would have faced similar problems, or even if we are in this particular thing. According to me, he would have focused on three things. The first thing is leadership. See, whatever be the situation, the leader has to stand very strong. Okay, so the leader is able to stand strong and say, "Let us all fight it out together." Fortunately for us, we got great leaders in our country. You know, I've seen our uh, prime minister. The kind of an effort that he's taking, you know, speaking to us continuously. So Narendra Modi ji is luckily for us showing great leadership. We got a great leader, and also so many chief ministers. So if you look at all the states today, are accepting and saying, "Let's fight a common problem rather than fighting against each other." So China can definitely focus on leadership, and I'm not only talking about political leadership. I'm also talking about leadership at the basic level. For example, the district administration, the IAS officers, the IPS officers, the police system, the medical system. So the people are heading hospitals. They also have to show leadership. If you're a business leader, you also show your leadership. If you're a school teacher or a principal, you also have to take care of the online classes and all those works. So you know, in such situations, Chanakya would say, "All leaders, awaken, get up, get ready, and start doing your work." 
The second is Praja. You know, one of the biggest problem our country is facing. The leaders are doing their duty, but Praja is not doing their duty. We are all telling now, uh, please don't come out of your house. Be under lockdown, lockdown. But people want to go out, and the government is crying, requesting the police has to be forced today. We are planning to get the army in. So as there is Raj Dharma, there is also Praja Dharma. The second is that as citizens, we need to follow our dharma of being inside our houses. And the third thing, which is very very important, is that Chanakya would work on a solution. There is a problem. So Raja is doing his dharma, Praja is doing their dharma, but what is the final solution? And in Corona situation, we have to find a vaccine, a medical remedy to that. So focus on all these three. And I don't think it is very different than what the current situation is. If Chanakya were to come in, you would also follow the same things. Next is a question from Anand, and he says, uh, "You are a YouTuber. Oh, congratulations, Anand. So Anand is a YouTuber. Anand." Uh, Uh, Joar, its name is, and uh, I'm a YouTuber, and I'm in BSc, uh, Bachelor of Science. Should I continue doing being a YouTuber, or should I continue my studies and finish off my BSc? See, this is one advantage and disadvantage also. Being a YouTuber, you must have already become famous. If you already started making money, you are on the path of getting rich. But you know, the other thing is, don't stop your studies. Today's generation, everybody is online. They are becoming stars on. YouTube, Facebook, TikToks. But let me tell you, that's a dangerous way of looking at temporary solutions to long-term problems. Please complete your education. What is wrong in completing your education? Also, being a YouTuber. YouTuber is a very important profession. I know of YouTubers who make crores of rupees. Nothing wrong. You can become rich being a YouTuber. It's it's also defined as a field of artist. Congratulations on being a successful YouTuber. But personally speaking, I'll be very upset if you discontinue your graduation. You should continue that, and why don't after graduation look out a course on YouTuber itself? Maybe you can become a better YouTuber. So manage both, handle both. As I said, no, dono hato me laddu. Otherwise, you know, lifelong you'll have a regret. Me YouTuber to ban gaya, and God forbid tomorrow, you know, your career of YouTuber doesn't continue, and you'll neither be a graduate, neither be a YouTuber. At least you should be a graduate. Never ever stop that you something that you started. Complete what you started. Ravi uh, Hebbar. That's the next question that's coming in from. How uh, to corporate uh, Chanakya in today's world? How to use corporate Chanakya in today's world? Uh, okay, uh, I think uh, corporate Chanakya is about using it in today's world. But I've been practically talking every day the 14 days, 14 books of Chanakya. How to use it? In fact, if you're not using Chanakya in today's world, I'll be the most upset. You should not glorify the past. So Ravi ji, I think uh, all my books and my suggestion also is about using Chanakya and Shrivastava. Of course, you can't compare apples to oranges, even though both are fruits, but they are different dimensions. You have to use the principles in a modern format. You can use technology, which is not there during Chanakya's time. So use it in a modern day application. Don't get stuck in the past. Uh, Simran ji, it's another question that's coming in. How to be personally mentored by me? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you want to be personally mentored by me? I'll be very happy uh, if I can get an opportunity to mentor you also. There have been so many requests coming in. I would request that all those people want to be personally mentored. Please drop in a message on my Facebook or Instagram messengers saying that you know you want to be personally mentored. Let us know what kind of a mentoring you want. Uh, I would be happy to do that. Send in a message. My team will compile it and definitely I'll try and personally mentor you. In fact, that is what I do. You know, that has been uh, something that I've been loving to do: help people in whatever little problem. I don't claim that I'm a great guru or something like that, so don't consider me like that. But whatever little knowledge and experience that I've gathered, I'll be happy to personally guide you. I like to wind up today with the quiz part of it. So two times I've asked you three questions. So today is the third part of the quiz. Listen to this carefully, and you'll have to answer it. And we are compiling all the answers, and we'll be definitely declaring a winner. So what is this particular quiz? The first one is yesterday we covered the art of thinking, and in the book there was. Six types of thinking. Okay, there were six type of thinking. You have to tell me all the six types. You have to go back, listen to the uh, video recording, or read the book. What are the six type of thinking mentioned in the book? Inside Chanakya's mind, Anvikshik and the art of thinking. The second question is, who is the publisher of my book? Who is the publisher of my book, Chanakya in Daily Life? Remember the book, Chanakya in Daily Life, the yellow cover page. Who is the publisher of my book? And the next one is 
which book of mine which book of radha krishnan pillai got the raymond crossword book of the year award which is that book of mine we already covered that which is the book which got an award so answer all these three questions so with that we are going to wind up today's book remember this is the book and i can the art of getting rich and tomorrow's book is a children's book please tell all the children to read that chatur chanakya and the himalayan problem chatur chanakya and the himalayan problem i'm looking forward to see you tomorrow krishna pillai signing off on this particular series 14 days 14 books of chanakya thank you so much i'll see you tomorrow